Welcome to another edition of PAC TV Community News. This week you'll visit Plymouth Plantation's Strawberry Festival. We're looking at the strawberry in cooking as well as the strawberry leaves for their medicinal purposes. And meet the owners of a new bakery in Pembroke. We're trying to source as many local and organic produce products as, as possible. PAC TV Community News brings you to the grand opening of Duxbury's Police Station. I think we end up with a wonderful product that is going to fit the needs of the Duxbury Police Department for many years to come. And we'll look at a new way to play an old game in Kingston. The reason we go out geocaching, it's, it's fun to do. You get to go places you never thought of. PAC TV Community News reports on a soggy balloon fight in Pembroke. And our Local Eats segment features fares from Duxbury. And here's the rule of thumb. You, if you don't like it, my son made it. If you like it, I made it. It's all ahead on this week's edition of PAC TV Community News. There's a new bakery on Center Street in Pembroke. PAC TV Community News visited the Oblada Bakery, met the owner, and sampled some of their tasty baked goods. Oblada comes from the Beatles song, Obladi Oblada. Uh, in the song, it states that life goes on. A few years ago, I, I got laid off from my job, uh, and this was all born from that situation. A large portion of our eggs we source from here in Pembroke from a couple of different farms. I enjoy using the real, the real deal instead of going to the store and buying you know, whatever eggs they have that have been kicking around for a couple weeks or whatever. Uh, you know, I'm getting eggs that were just, you know, our fresh eggs, two, to two days old maybe. Uh, boy, cake just loves to rise up with, with the good stuff. Uh, the butter we use is Kate's Butter of Maine. Uh, it's from Old Orchard Beach, Maine, and they do a, a, a small batch, slow churned, old fashioned style of butter that nobody does on a large scale. Um, so they definitely have a unique thing going, uh, and, and I, I don't, there's no better butter than that stuff right there. Hey, yes. Can I get a two salted caramel uh, cupcakes? Oh, sorry, sorry. One of the salted caramel and the uh, uh, Danish one at the bottom. A large portion of what we bring in for produce is organic and or locally grown. Um, and with the locally grown thing, this is changing from week to week what's available, you know, here in town or here in surrounding towns or this region. Um, so, you know, we've had the most delicious uh, baby spinach, you know, the whole time we've been open. Uh, and it, it's, I, I've eaten so many salads, it's the best stuff ever. Uh, and now it's at, a, it's at an end, unfortunately. I can't get that baby spinach anymore. Uh, but the cucumbers are coming now, you know, the, the local stuff. Uh, tomatoes are all still coming. Uh, you know, there's a lot of greenhouse tomatoes available. Uh, organic stuff, locally grown. We expanded uh, into sandwiches. Uh, so the sandwiches, the salads, and the wraps, uh, all Applegate, deli meat, and we're trying to source as many local and organic produce products as, as possible. Having been to lots of bakeries and, and all that, uh, I mean, there's nothing like scratch from scratch cooking. And uh, I, I feel really very confident in our cakes and our frostings and our flavors. Duxbury's new state-of-the-art police station is in full operation. Last month, they held their grand opening, and PAC-TV Community News was present, along with police officers, town officials, and residents. I would like to welcome everyone here for the dedication of our new police station here in Duxbury. The, the iteration that we had to go through to get here, I think we end up with a wonderful product that 
is going to fit the needs of the Duxbury Police Department for many years to come. Uh, the technology that we've put in here is, is you know, first rate uh, because, you know, the way I think I look at it and I think the way the committee felt, the, the role of the Duxbury Police Department and the Fire Department, public safety is a huge um, investment that we do in our, in our personnel, uh, the top quality personnel that we have, but not only that, but we need to give them the, the space and the equipment with which to operate efficiently, uh, basically on our behalf. So basically we're just gonna fingerprint this bottle here. I'm just putting some pink fluorescent fingerprint powder on here. And if you put an orange filter on there, you'll be able to really see that there's a, some really good ridge detail here. And we have here, so, this is brand new to this facility, we've never done before. But the end product turned out to be very, very good and it came in very efficient. I think the price of the building had come down by about 25% over the course of those three years when we were trying to go back and forth and uh, plan what the building should look like. And the taxpayers finally came forward and said, okay, we've seen you know, about as much as you can cut out of this project, approved it, and I think we got a very efficient product and a wonderful product out of what you uh, finally agreed to uh, pay for. It's, it's an amazing building. It's very impressive. We have state-of-the-art technology. Um, it's not only safer, but more secure. It's more efficient, and it's a more comfortable work environment for the men and women of our department, which is, uh, which is no small thing. One of the lesser known features of the building is actually this room that we're in right now, and uh, I hope uh, that you will come back here and we'll this, this room will get a lot of use. Um, it's a public building, it's a public room that the public can, can use for conferences, committee meetings, and the like. And I know from how much, work, how much uh, use the senior center gets that, uh, uh, on a nightly basis that it's, it's, it's a great thing to have another, uh, another uh, room such as this that we can use for, for town services. So that, that'll be a great uh, feature that we didn't have in the old police station. With this Smile! Uh, yes! <laughs> Strawberries were everywhere at Plymouth Plantation last month during their annual weekend-long Strawberry Thanksgiving Festival. This was the Wampanoag Indigenous Program's 40th anniversary, and the Strawberry Festival highlighted the native tradition of celebrating the first harvest of the new growing season. PAC-TV Community News was there to capture the event. This is our 18th annual strawberry festival. For Wampanoag people, the strawberry is considered to be the first fruit of the year. And when this happens, you have a, a Thanksgiving. It's a harvest feast. Um, it's feasting, it's boat, um, boat races, we have football games, you look behind me, you can see the guys are practicing on wrestling, we're having a wrestling tournament later on today. It's a very large day long, two days, actually two days this year, two day long celebration. Uh, we're celebrating the really the first fruit of the harvest here in New England, the strawberry. And we're thrilled to, to be able to celebrate that because we're really looking at the way people ate seasonally. So we're going to have a feast, strawberry feast, and uh, today we're cooking a roasted turkey, uh, some roasted scup and turkey soup with some boiled bread. And we also have some strawberry boiled bread, strawberry tea with mint. We have a boiled dinner over there also. We'll have some lobsters and crabs over the tripods and uh, a roasting fish. Well for us as a, a Wampanoag program we have a, a staff but we also have hire outside specialists to come in. We have native authors coming in. We have native singers here um, who specialize in Eastern singing and dancing. Uh, we have championship boat races here championship wrestlers here. So we pull these people from all around New England, majority are Wampanoag, but that's why you don't necessarily have to be Wampanoag. 
It's, a, it's just a fun, fun event. In the 17th century Pilgrim Village, we're looking at the strawberry in cooking um, for its uh, little burst of sweetness, as well as the strawberry leaves for their medicinal purposes. Um, strawberry, strawberry leaves are known for their ability to really clean out toxins from your body in the 17th century. So after you'd spent the winter eating a lot of uh, eating a lot of salty foods that were preserved, you'd have some some fresh foods and in the craft center we have a number of children's activities going on we're making strawberry fans Barry our strawberry mascot is there and we're uh, also playing some games with strawberries <laughs> Yeah, I'm here at Plymouth Plantation today and we're uh, getting ready to uh, taste some of the Strawberry Festival, uh, Thanksgiving Festival's uh, dishes that have been made by a whole host of different people, but many of them are employees here and uh, look forward to judging them and seeing what uh, the, people of, uh, the people of Plymouth Plantation have put together that I might even be able to in the future use for myself. Like I said, a lot of feasting, a lot of socializing, a lot of dancing, a lot of singing. It's just overall very good feast. Traditional treasure hunts may become a thing of the past with a new updated activity called geocaching. In this new kind of treasure hunt, players go online to find locations of hidden containers or geocaches and then use their GPS devices to find the actual treasures hidden in woods, parking lots, trees, and parks. PAC TV Community News caught up with Kingston residents and geocaching enthusiasts Tom and Jan Bolas to experience this new style of treasure hunt. We have downloaded a cache here at uh, Bay Farm and it programmed into my GPS and we're going to go uh, on the trail and go look for it. Hopefully uh, we'll find it. On here right now you see a little uh, triangle at the bottom and a, a purple line. The triangle is where we're standing. The purple line is aimed towards the cache. On the left hand side uh, it looks like a figure seven which means the degree of accuracy is seven feet and on the right the number at the top uh, is the distance to the cache. So it's about a quarter mile out. I'm going to t try to start training her because what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a cache and then I'm going to put a bone in it and let her go over and take the bone out of the cache. Eventually, hopefully, she'll smell different smells and when she gets to it, uh, she'll find the cache before we do. We'll have to see how that works out. That's going to be a progress over the summer. Go get her! Go get her! The reason we go out geocaching, it's, it's fun to do, but one of the big things is That's a little bit far away. you get to go places you never thought of. These caches are hidden in basically pri uh, public land, preserves, uh, thing, places like that. Okay, we'll go ahead and check there. Oh, I got it. You have? Yep. Oh, there was. Uh. <laughs> I got it, but can I get it? Oh, look at the case that's cool. That's cool. I like that case. Whoops. Pop the top. Now there is a pencil and a geocache card. No trinkets in this one, it's a little bit small for all that kind of stuff. But if you take the, the bag here, you want to hold on to that, open up the, the bag. Everybody pr pretty much tries to waterproof them. And there's a little notebook in here. So uh, we log everything in, in as Tom, Jan, and Gans at the dog. And that's how things are found. Seal it up and return it where I found it. We've gotten to places that we wouldn't normally go to. And some of them are quite beautiful and very interesting to see. 
So it's, 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 it's an adventure as well as finding a cache. The town of Pembroke had a wet event recently on their town green. It was a fundraiser for the Tree Lighting Committee, with over 100 young Pembroke residents showing up for a wild and wet water balloon fight. Pack TV Community News kept a safe distance to bring you this story. The Kingston Library Needs Assessment Committee is seeking input on their town's library services. A preliminary survey was conducted at the Kingston Annual Town Meeting. The committee has used that initial data to create a new survey and is asking both town residents and non-residents to participate. The survey, which takes about 10 minutes to complete, will close on July 15th. Print copies are available at the Kingston Library at the Kingston Townhouse, or you can respond online at the address below. For any questions, you can either call or email the Kingston Library from their website, kingstonpubliclibrary.org. Survey results will be available from their website in mid-August. with PCN's Local Eat segment and today we are here in Duxbury at the Wildflower Cafe and we are here with owner Tom Bissett. Tom, tell me, how, you guys are the original owners of Wildflower Cafe. Tell me yeah. how long you've been here. We've been here, we're in our 13th year now. And, uh, we started here, it was just rubble in here, there was nothing in here and we built everything out from scratch and had six weeks to do it. And, we're still going after all that. And you guys uh, offer different things. I see uh, you have you have a kids class. Tell me about that. And you have music now. And this beautiful bar. I want to hear about this beautiful bar. Well, this bar, my my wife and her brother built this bar. Um, they're both very talented, as you can see the woodwork and stuff that's involved here. 
we're opening at night later I'm trying to get a, get a little sports bar something people can walk to from you know the neighborhood and tell me tell me about your kids cooking classes um, we run them they run in five-week courses and they're an hour a week and they've been I've been doing them for four years now anyways and it runs five weeks and on the last week they bring their parents in and they wait on their parents, they greet them at the door, they cook all their food, they clean everything up, they do it all. So the parents seem to get a kick out of that too. Oh my goodness, Tom, tell me, what do we have here? This looks absolutely incredible. Well, I hope you're hungry. All right, this right here is uh, called the vegetable hash and it has a little bit of Caribbean jerk spice in it. You just give it a little kick. Um, homemade grilled cornbread, hand sliced, fresh baked oatmeal toast, homemade vegetarian baked beans. Um, this is a, what we call a French toast sampler. And we have 50 different combinations or choices, but this particular one has cranberry, blueberry, and banana bread. Oh my goodness, you can get it, well, you can you can get get it all in one. And you can just combine any, any way you want. You can get a regular wow. piece, a piece of raspberry, and a, you know, the combinations are virtually endless. <laughs> <laughs> this is a homemade maple caramel sauce that you can put on your French toast. We also have a homemade raspberry syrup, and we have a homemade blueberry syrup, so you can try whichever one you like. All right, you keep using the word homemade. I'm, I'm getting a trend here. Tell me. Well, this is my second home, so every, we make everything here. Uh, from the our homemade spun honey butter, <laughs> strawberry preserves. You make your own butter? We make our own butter, yes. It, what the else? bees help. <laughs> what else do you do? So you make the bread? We bake all our own breads. Oh my goodness. We slice everything by hand. We make everything that we can, possibly can, from scratch. Wow. That, that's incredible. I mean, that, how much time and, and love and passion. We're one of the few places that still make a, a real Hollandaise sauce and not from a, not a mock Hollandaise sauce or one's out of a package. Or, I think people need to know that because getting something that's just made right from scratch here is, is incredible and I cannot wait to dive into this. And just to tell me about the, tell me about the yogurt. And this granola. is a yogurt, um, French vanilla granola. We, we bake our own granola here too. <laughs> bake your own granola? <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, so again, fresh fruit, yogurt. What else more would you want for a healthy breakfast? Well, this is incredible. Thank you. I can't, right. wait, to, I can't right. wait to jump in and Dig try. in. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Thank you. And here's the rule of thumb. Yes. If you, if you don't like it, my son made it. If you like it, I made it. All right. <laughs> That's how it works here. <laughs> Tom, thank you so much for having us. Um, I understand one last thing, that you guys have some sort of a pancake challenge. Can you tell me about that? Pancake challenge. Simple. Come in, eat three monster pancakes, three orders of meat, 30 minutes, and the meal's on us. That's all you gotta do. Tom, thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. This is Kim Mia with PCN's Local Eats in Wildflower Cafe in Duxbury. Thanks for watching this week's edition of PAC TV Community News. Replay times are listed on our website, pactv.org. Click on the PCN logo to watch individual stories or an entire program. See us on YouTube by searching for the PAC TV Community News Channel and like us on Facebook to receive previews each week and links to all our stories. We'll see you next week on PAC TV Community News.